Welcome on back to the Wolverine Recruiting Show. Clayton Safey here with EJ Holland and Tim Verghese. We're going to get into some Michigan football recruiting storylines here of the week. Remember to join us for full coverage of Michigan football recruiting at thewolverine.com. One dollar gets you an entire year of premium access over there, so go and do that right now. A um, lot of news. You know, It's been a newsy offseason for Michigan football, especially on the coaching staff front. You had the Jim Harbaugh situation. You've had two coordinators leave. Um You've had some other movement on the staff, Grant Newsom being promoted to tight ends coach, Jay Harbaugh moving to the defensive side of the ball to coach the safeties. Um, you've had Ron Bellamy moving to offense to coach the wide receivers, new D coordinator and Jesse Minter, uh, Sharon Moore, Matt Weiss being promoted to offensive coordinator. So now let's talk about how that's going to impact recruiting. And I guess EJ, uh, break down for us your thoughts on what these changes mean, what they're going to do for the Wolverines on the trail. Yeah, losing both coordinators, you know, on paper doesn't look great. But when you look at Josh Gaddis, he was considered a plus recruiter early on during his time at Michigan, but he slowly faded all the way to the point where you had former GA Nate Crutchfield sending out wide receiver offers. Now, whether that was because he already had one foot out the door or because he was really focused on his offense in a make or break year, don't really know, but he really did fade on the trail. So he wasn't the same guy that he used to be. Now you have Ron Bellamy come over, who's really developing into a star recruiter in the Big Ten and has a potential to be one of the best recruiters nationally uh, once he continues to get settled in. Remember with Bellamy, he hadn't coached college football. He was a high school coach. He came in and he helped put together a really strong close for Michigan. So I think having him recruit wide receivers, which is a position of need this cycle after, again, Gaddis, you know, kind of just uh, rode off into the sunset and didn't really recruit a whole lot of guys. I think wide receiver is a big need, uh, and I think Bellamy is going to do a great job. He's already reached out to to high level targets like Carnell Tate and Jalen Brown. And having a dedicated wide receiver coach, I think, is also going to help Michigan on the field, which I'm sure uh, Clay and and Ballas and those guys will talk more about in their other videos here on this great YouTube page. But I think overall, it's a it's a positive move for wide receiver recruiting. And then, you know, you, you keep the you keep the staff kind of intact on the offensive side of the ball. Other than that, you bump Sharon Moore up to uh, offensive coordinator. Matt Weiss gets the co-C title. So those guys are going to continue to recruit the same guys uh, they have been. And I think having Sharon Moore maybe have a, a little more handle on offensive targets overall will help as well. Like the combination of Moore and Bellamy recruiting wide receivers is going to be a big boost over just having Gaddis recruit wide receivers. And, and, you know, a lot of people still forget Moore is considered a great recruiter as well. Like he's always been a, a guy that's finished really strong. I think last cycle was a little bit of an anomaly for him, only landing two offensive linemen. But I think he's still a strong recruiter. I think that combo is going to be great. Um, and, and I think the, uh, the staff's going to be just fine with Grant Newsom recruiting tight ends as well. He's only, what, 24 years old, but he's a guy that can relate really, really well to recruits. Um, he doesn't have a, a ton of experience, but he did a nice job learning from Sharon Moore, just kind of, you know, getting acclimated to the recruiting side of things. He's considered a great young up and coming coach, as Jim Harbaugh stated. And I think he can be a great young up and coming recruiter as well. And then on the defensive side of the ball, like Mike McDonald was great. Um, I think it, it was a tough loss. To, to see him go over to the Baltimore Ravens, but you bring in Jesse Minter, who uh, is familiar with that scheme. So I don't think a, a whole lot will change in regards to what type of prospects they go after. And to be completely honest, I mean, Mike McDonald was very involved on the recruiting trail, but it was more of a, an overseer type. And I, I think that's what Minter is going to be. And, and Minter did recruit well at a lower level, was the former Sunbelt Recruiter of the Year. But you bring in Mike Elston, who I think is an upgrade over Sean Nua. Uh, you give him the title of recruiting coordinator, which means he's going to have really uh, a lot of say in the overall defensive board. And he's been, again, considered one of the better recruiters in the Midwest and throughout the country for some time. So I think that's an upgrade over Nua. And then you have Jay Harbaugh moving over uh, from tight ends to safeties. And I don't think you'll see a huge drop off there. Safety's not a big need this cycle, so they'll have time to get settled in. And Jay Harbaugh you know, as much as people don't like to give him credit, has been a steady coach and a very, very steady recruiter across the board. So I think 
all these staff changes from a recruiting side of things are a plus in my opinion whether it all gels together on the field you know that's to be determined but just looking at at their resumes looking at the roles they're filling in i think that all the staff movement is going to be just fine uh michigan just has to get settled in here as we continue to roll through the dead period once they hit the road in march i think you'll see them uh really start to to find some success i know the uh, hardball nfl situation kind of stalled momentum we'll see if michigan can pick it up once they get back on the road yeah absolutely and i feel like there's there's been a decent amount of changes we can't act like there hasn't been but really it's it's two spots you know two guys left um you made some other changes obviously you promoted from within for grant newsom you promoted from within at the offensive coordinator spot and you hired a guy with a similar scheme as d coordinator so i think it's going to look a lot similar uh to what we saw last season not only on the field but probably on the recruiting trail as well um and grant newsom man 24 years old as you mentioned but he's he got a jump start in coaching because he started as a student after suffering a career-ending injury so he still has more experience than a you know typical 24 year old would have um let's talk now and, and go to you tim on this luke montgomery uh, who's been a top offensive line target in the class of 2023 for some time now he is deciding on friday obviously not trending in the right direction for michigan looks like it's going to be the rival ohio state buckeyes but caden green now the priority there another top 100 guy as well six foot six offensive tackle tell us about that situation and, and where michigan stands yeah um so michigan wasn't in that recruitment even just a couple months ago but I've, I've really come on strong here the last couple months thanks to kind of the on-field performance of 2021 and you know Sharon Moore's continued efforts um, they were able to get green on campus back in January ahead of the dead period the visit went really well by all accounts um, you know Michigan really really made a move um, with that being said I think Oklahoma is going to be the school that is like similar to Luke Montgomery that other school in the recruitment um, you know, he's made three visits to Oklahoma already. He's already planning a fourth coming out of this dead period. Um, and there is some buzz. He could even, the OU staff is going to push him to try and lock things down on that visit. Um, Michigan is, is also obviously working. Um, they want to get him back on campus in March to kind of see, like to allow him to come see some of the practice settings in, in spring ball. Um, and he, and he fully plans to take up the staff on that offer. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him a couple of times, um, potentially in March and April, uh, come up to campus. So, um, you know, if, if he doesn't make a decision in early March and the OU staff's not able to shut him down, I think that bodes well for kind of Michigan's chances. Um, you know, we've had a source close to the recruitment, obviously tell us Michigan's done everything they can. Um, you know, they're doing all the right things in this recruitment, but ultimately it may just come down to the family's familiarity with Oklahoma and just the distance from, you know, Kansas City down to Norman, which is just, you know, so much easier for, you know, Green's family to get a, get down there to see him. So um, we'll kind of see. I mean, it's going to be one of those recruitments for sure that, um, you know, Michigan wasn't in a couple months ago. So now that they're in it um, and heavily, heavily in it, you know, it's going to be it's a, it's, this could be more so like big fish for 2023 as far as, uh, you know, pulling in a guy. Yeah, so we'll be keeping an eye on that one. Um, EJ, a guy that Michigan was able to close with is a three-star running back Cole Cabana out of Dexter, Michigan, here nearby Ann Arbor. Uh, obviously a speedster, potential 4.3 type of speed in the 40-yard dash uh, per his mom, or I think 4.37 uh, or you know something like that. So obviously he's got the speed there. Doesn't play against great competition, but he's lighting it up. Uh, 2023 running back so uh, what might be next in the class of 2023 I know it's it's semi early or it feels earlier at least for Michigan in this cycle than it actually is but uh, just your thoughts on this class as now they added another to the fold yeah and in terms of running back recruiting and starting off with Cabana like you said he's lightning fast uh, 4 3 4 I believe was the time he clocked at the Martin Luther King camp in Detroit uh, ran a 10 6 9 100 meter as a sophomore. So he's plenty fast. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He can line him up in the slot. He can do a lot of different things. I think Michigan now wants to land a big time workhorse type of back. You look at last cycle, Michigan flirted with the idea of taking two backs. They ended up with CJ Stokes, a three-star prospect who's solid, but you know, he's good at a lot of things, not great at, at any one thing. 
And it was, like I said, an extremely weak year at the running back position. So going forward into 2023, the goal has been to land two running backs this cycle. Could there be a third potentially, uh, depending on how well Mike Hart recruits? But like I said, they want a big uh, workhorse type back, uh, a guy that is considered more of an elite type of talent. I think I wouldn't call Cabana a gadget type guy. I don't even think he's an AJ Henning type guy. He's more of just your your secondary type third down back. Uh, I think you can use him maybe in the same way as like a Chris Evans type as well. Um, but looking forward at some of the targets they have, they are recruiting very, very hard in the state of Florida. A lot of elite backs there. Mark Fletcher, Trayon Webb, Richard Young. Uh, there's just uh, so many names to know there. Samuel Singleton, uh, a lot of uh, Michigan's top backs are in, in Florida. They are working hard on Dalen Smothers, uh, an on 300 prospect in North Carolina. They're working hard on consensus four-star running back Jaden Lemar out in the Pacific Northwest. So there are still a lot of running backs out there. But the focus for Mike Hart is finding a guy that is a top-level ball carrier. You know, this is going to be we're now going to be two cycles removed from Donovan Edwards. So finding a guy that can tote the rock in a similar fashion is, is imperative for this class. Yeah, definitely. And depth there is a concern going even into the 2022 season. You like what you have with Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum. But beyond that, I think some people are worried that is Tavier Dunlap or CJ Stokes, are they going to be ready to step in if needed? We already saw Michigan go into a couple games shorthanded at the running back spot due to injuries last season. So definitely something and you want to add to that room regardless with the, with the talent that level there. Um, so obviously we'll be monitoring, monitoring that at the Wolverine.com. $1 gets you an entire year of premium access to our message board over there. All of our premium stories. So join us over there. Just a dollar. That deal will not last forever. So take advantage right now. 